It's my feel good breakfast show. Welcome back, everybody. You're opening up with S3 here on your Feel Good Breakfast Show, just in time to take something away. Because usually when you go to people's house, you ask them, you know, if you want to go eat at someone's place, you ask them for Buttercut. But yeah. actually, Buttercut is a film depicting a slice of life in a Cape Muslim family. And it is being hailed by local and international critics for being the first film to bring this perspective to the Afrikaps dialect. Now, following a grieving family who gathers for Eid to hear their mother's surprise announcement, they end up confronting a lot more than they bargained for. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, take a look at this. Evel Subis is still stand. They have to prat or barca. Mommy doesn't know what she's doing. It's love, my girl. It's not love. Says who? He's a nice man. Ek gee nie om nie. Wist, sal jou at least try om my man te leer ken. Wie is Abu Talib in die Koran? Mohamed Sawun. Wat is die negende maand van die jaar? Ramadan. Wat is the call to pray? Adan. Sy is hier welkom hier nie. Ons het een paar gehad en sy sal nooit om visie. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I just made a pause. Who does? Yes. So, okay. It's written by the dynamic writing, as you can hear, directing and producing team of uh, Amy Jeffter, as well as Ephraim Gordon, who together have many accolades under their belt with their production company called Paper Jet Films. The movie just released nationwide this past weekend, and they're joining us to share a bit more. What an honor it is to chat to two legends. Welcome, Amy and Ephraim. Thanks for having hey, us. Thank you. Let me start off by saying congratulations. Some big names coming through. We, we've seen them all. But Amy, I'm going I'm to start with you first. I mean, you've spoken a lot about having wanted to create a film that depicted life on the Cape Flats as raw, as real, as authentically as possible. Why did you choose to go from the lens of the Cape Muslim community in this film? I think because for a long time, that um, particular culture and subculture within Cape Town and South Africa has been so underrepresented. Um, and if it was represented, it was through stereotypes. So we often see um, Muslim people depicted in ultra-violent ways, or we see a certain kind of point of view from the Cape Flats, but we really see stories about family and love and togetherness that comes from the Catholic community. Um, and that's why we wanted to tell a story um, differently, um, tell the story of our people differently. It's really a beautiful, beautiful way to deliver a story. And just to bring you in, Ephraim, you know, a family is the best way to actually carry a narrative forward. In fact, the story, I know it's comedic, but it's driven by following how different members of a family are dealing with grief. Can you share just a bit more about why this was chosen as the vehicle for this Cape Flats narrative? Well, we started uh, to add on from what Amy says to shift away from particular narratives, you know, particular narratives of us being violent or always in despair. And we wanted just to write a comedy, but we later saw there's an opportunity to connect us to a common humanity and um, to tell a particular, a, a deeper story about ourselves, where we can see ourselves in a way that, you know, we are proud of. And I think it's only when Amy started preparing for, uh, to direct, that she, uh, we had a conversation. She said, this film is actually about grief. And we should go with that because that is the one thing that connects us to all other peoples. And that's the one thing that kind of levels the playing field and says we are just like other people. And I think the beauty of this film is that it's very much relatable, especially oh, when, you, yes. when you think of the slang that, it, that is used in this. Amy, how did you guys go about ensuring that the Afrikaps, the slang, the words spoken was, again, authentic and also respected the aspects of Cape Muslim culture depicted within? I mean, for the, for the cultural aspects, we worked very closely with advisors on this film, um, with imams, with local community leaders. We wanted to make sure that we got the rituals and the tradition of being Cape Muslim right. So we consulted a lot. Um, and then just for the idea of Afrikaps, we really wanted this film to feel as homegrown as possible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think the local audience will be the first people who are experts on this language, who will be able to hear immediately if there's a false note. So we wanted to make sure that we 
our characters and our world sounds the way we sound. Um, whether you're from the southern suburbs, the northern suburbs, or the Cape Flats, or you know, if you come from the you want to be able to recognize those particular words of the language. Um, so yeah, I think that was very important for us to get that right. And I think you did, because if an international audience can also pick up on this Africa Ups and also relate, it's powerful. So if I'm, the film has enjoyed a lot of success at festivals in the USA, winning awards, editing, directing, acting. Why do you think it's hitting the right note with critics? Well, I think our little story at this corner of the globe has now proven to resonate with people from all over the world because I think of particularly the subject matters and things we chose, it created the idea that we are just human first. But it's also proof that our stories matter and no matter how small our stories are, the way we tell it and the dignity with which we tell it is always the thing that people from anywhere else in the world can relate to. And I think that's um, why they buy into it is because everyone on this team, whether it was the actors, the crew, um, producers, everyone on this team, uh, gave it the all and gave it the particular dignity that the story deserved and I think it shows. I would actually kill to just be behind the scenes and <laughs> see the dynamic and see this all come together. But I want to put this question out to both of you. What do you think the greater audience will enjoy about the film now that it's obviously out on theatrical release just after Eid, by the way? Yeah, I think it's, it's about... Um, after this very tough year that we've had, um, a lot of us have had the experience of losing family members or knowing people close to us who have lost family members. And I think the film feels very different now in light of coming out of this pandemic. And it's just about knowing that, you know, the, your loved ones are your first friends, they're the first people you know in the world, your family is those closest to you. And I think the audience is just going to feel that togetherness through this film. Um, yeah. Yeah, and uh, like Amy said, now this particular time is specific in the sense that um, we have gone through so many losses. Uh, we finished shooting this film in February, February last year. So that's before COVID even hit and before we even went into lockdown. We didn't know that this is going to be the time in which we show this film. And I think it's now more relevant than even when we shot it. Ephraim and Jamie, thanks. Uh, and Amy, thank you very much for joining us. It's been an absolute journey into the narrative of this film. We're looking forward to chatting to some other characters. And you can celebrate the authentic representation of South African culture in film. You can catch Buttercut, which is currently screening in cinemas nationwide. Please take your Tupperware along with you for the popcorn. <laughs> we'll be back later with the cast of the film to learn a bit more about what it was like shooting. And as uh, Jamie said a little earlier, the behind the scenes, it must have been hilarious. So we'll take a little Buttercut out of the movie for you and deliver it to you right here on Expresso. <laughs>